take a quick look at how to get around the Mix Console in Nuendo 7. The Mix Console can be opened by hitting the F3 key. It can be completely rescaled to fit any screen resolution that you're currently running. Different parts of the mixer can also be resized. So if you want taller faders, bigger meters. We can hit the G and H keys to zoom in and out to get wider or narrower views of our mixer. If we have our mixer selected here and I'm hovering my mouse, I could use the scroll wheel to navigate. In the upper left hand corner, we'll see the setup window and this will allow us to choose to hide or to display different parts of the mixer. My channel selector here allows me to pick and choose different components to hide these particular channels. If we have folders in our project, we can choose to hide an entire folder or by holding down a shift key to see only those tracks in the folder. These can be saved as configurations. So if I wanted to add this as a configuration, we could do that. Or if I wanted to show all channels in my mixer, I could sort that or show only selected channels, hide the selected channels, show channels that have data. A really handy one is show tracks that have data at the cursor position or where the playhead is. So now I could just hide every track that wasn't playing at that moment in time. Clicking on zones will allow us to anchor a particular track. So if I want to take my master fader and always have it on the right hand side, regardless of where I am in the screen, we click on the right circle. Or if I want it to be anchored to the left hand side, I click on the left circle for that track. At the top, we're going to have our project overview. So this will kind of show me all of my different tracks that are going on in a particular project and allows us to navigate quickly. I can have meters below that where I can see wave meters. So I can see what is coming, what is going. Or if I wanted to switch back to my PPM meters and I could look at my meters for input, post fader, or post panner. The next portion that we're going to have will allow us to see our EQ. So open this up, we could have our EQ window. I could see the frequencies that are present in a particular track. We could adjust a channel EQ and we could use different keyboard shortcuts to constrain direction on Q, frequency, or gain. And we could actually see the original EQ versus what's been applied with the EQ changes. The next section is our rack zone. So if I wanted to even hide a couple of the components here so I can see bigger racks, we can now just see the and a number of different types of racks, including routing, pre-inserts, EQs, etc. So if I wanted to look at my routing, I could select a number of different tracks here. And if I wanted to route these to the same source, I could just hold down my Alt and Shift, and this puts you into quick link mode. And this is really handy if I want to take these tracks and just quickly link them together. And again, just hold down Shift plus Alt, and that will take off quick link mode. And you could enable it with this icon here. So if I wanted to route these to all of the same destination, I could hold down Alt plus Shift and then choose a destination for those selected channels. If I wanted these to go to to ripple inputs or outputs, I would just hold down shift and it would sequentially route to so like input one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, etc. Below that we'll have the pre section. So this allows us to have a high cut and low cut filter, as well as 48 dB of gain. And this is before the, it actually hits the channel of the mixer. So we could have gain here plus we could invert the phase. And if I wanted to close the section, I could just click on its tab. The next section we'll have is inserts. 
So if I wanted to come here, we could actually have our inserts organized. So we could say, okay, I want to see all my default plugins. At this point, we could just say, new to our plugin manager, we could pick different scenarios. So if I want to see plugins that I specify for sound effects or for dialogue editing, we can just have that set and defined right there. So, or if I quickly want to type in, let's say I'm looking for vintage compressor, I could just type the word vintage in at that point, just double click. And then that would automatically pop up that particular plugin. So if I wanted to copy that plugin to a different slot or change the positions of those two plugins, you could just kind of swap them out uh, very easily. And this kind of the rack that we're seeing here follows our signal flow. So if I want to see my EQs, this would be just a numeric representation. So as I adjust here graphically, we could see numerically what's going on, or as I adjust numerically with my mouse scroll wheel, we can see the EQs. Now the next one is really interesting because it kind of gives us a kind of a large console experience. You know, we see a lot of people prefer mixing on large consoles. I'm just going to activate my quick link and I could just choose to see only what we call the channel strip. So we'll make this a little larger here. And the first thing I want to do is let's say on all these tracks, I've activated my quick link mode. And now I wanted to see uh, my brick wall limiter on every one of those tracks. So instead of instantiating traditional plugin interfaces that take up a lot of screen real estate, I can now have different uh, tape saturations. I could say, okay, I want an envelope shaper or a deesser on these particular tracks. I wanted to have a noise gate on all these tracks. Plus I wanted to have a vintage compressor. And now we could just kind of navigate freely within these. Now what's really interesting is not only do we have independent side chaining within these, but we could just say, change the signal flow order of these particular tracks. So I could say, okay, in this track, I wanted to see a brick wall limiter come before the tape saturation. And we could actually store this as a configuration. So let's say if I want this to be one, I could do that. Now, if I wanted to set a different configuration, and let's say maybe this time, I wanted to only see uh, routing my pre-inserts, sends, and VCAs. And we'll go ahead and open up these different settings here. I could now add this as a configuration. And we'll call it two. And now I could just freely navigate and, and have my mixer configured kind of exactly how I want to. And I could use my own keyboard shortcuts to see all those different components. Below that we'll have our sends. And one thing that's really handy is the ability to right click. And then we could say, I wanted to add an effects channel send to send three. And I'm gonna choose this. And before I do this, I want to just quickly turn on a quick link, and this will do this for all of the selected channels. So again, right click, add effects. So let's say if I wanted to add a reverb, uh, and I wanted to add, let's say, a convolution reverb to reference that comes with Nuendo, we could just do that. And now I've just added that send, and again, I could just turn it on and adjust my send amounts and be able to quickly have access to that particular plugin. If I wanted to assign these tracks to a group, I could just right click. I could add a group channel to the selected channels. So, and this could be a 5.1 or stereo, or again, up to a 13.1 group. So if I would just want to quickly add a, all those channels to a new group, we can just have that defined very easily there. Now this also brings up some interesting concepts of linking. So we saw where we could do our quick link where the selected channels will now be linked just that easily. And if I hold down the alt key, I can temporarily override that link. We could also have permanently defined link groups as well. So if I wanted to come here, I could say, okay, we want to create a link group and let's call this dialogue. 
And in this link, I could say I want the EQ and volume to be linked, but not the panning, sends, or inserts. So you could pick different components of which will actually be linked together. Kind of going down, we have direct routing, which will allow you to route to multiple destinations. So if you have different stem groups set up, and one of the secrets here is if you actually just kind of come to the mixer here, you could actually say, we want to make sure that direct routing summing mode is on. So now we're able to send to multiple destinations. And if I say, okay, I want this track here, and this routing can be completely automated as well. So if I say, okay, let's just take these channels and link those. And at that point, you could send to multiple destinations very quickly. And the last section that we'll take a look at here quickly is the VCA. So now if I have existing automation going on in my project, and we'll just say, okay, we'll take a look at these channels right here. Let's say, let just delete this link. And I'll take a look at these channels here. What I can do is assign them to my VCA. And instead of summing the channels, I could just adjust the automation here of my VCA fader. So this way, if the automation is going in different directions, at that point, I could bring it down without affecting uh, the routing going to different sends. Now to see an extended view of a particular mixer channel, you could click on the E key. And this, we could see our inserts, we could see our channel strip that's available, so we could activate it here. If we have insert plugins, we could just see these listed right here. So if we have like the Voxango Curve EQ, which is included. If I want to see the channel strip, I want to see my EQ window here. And something that's really handy, especially for doing music projects, is for the frequency, you could actually just double click and say, okay, I want to go to G2 type in the note name and it will actually jump to that particular frequency. So we can see our sends here as well as the capability of uh, having our Q sends plus our volume and we get it right read automation solo mute and our surround panner. Now everything in Nuendo is really set up for different uh, surround capabilities and the path could be up to 13.1 channels wide. And we give you a number of different options for the surround panner. So this would be a typical surround panner here. But if you right click, you could actually say, okay, I want a standard panner or I wanted a surround pan, kind of an older surround panner from original earlier versions of Nuendo, the version five, or if you wanted to have the AnyMix Pro, you could actually just pick and choose different surround panners directly there. So as you can see, just kind of working and navigating around the Nuendo mixer is incredibly flexible and configurable so that you could find things that you need to find and be able to get your work done.